Coast to Coast, direct from Austin. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show on this Wednesday, July 2nd, 2014. I'm David Knight, your host for this hour. Alex is going to be joining us later in the show. And we're also going to have an interview with Harry Dent, a uh, economist who is going to talk to us about the metrics of what's happening. We've got a pretty high stock market right now. The Dow hit 17,000 this week. He thinks that's at the top, and he's going to talk about what he thinks is next. And he's not the only one who's talking about that. We've got Donald Trump saying that Americans need to prepare for financial ruin. But he's going to be joining us later in the show. Of course, yesterday we had Peter Van Buren, who was talking about the ghost of Tom Joad, essentially a retelling of the Depression-era story of uh, Grapes of Wrath, putting that in the context of not the Dust Bowl, but the Rust Belt. So that was kind of a fictional uh, take on it. Today we're going to have uh, someone who's going to talk to us about the economics of it, about the metrics of it. We have a couple of stories that are breaking. You know, even as I was driving into work today, even PBS is talking about health concerns at the border. As the border collapses and we see anyone and everyone coming in, as we see people being held in very close quarters and conditions that are less than ideal for sanity, we see that uh, even they're talking about it, but of course they're downplaying the risk. They're talking about it because they want to reassure people that there's not any risk. Well, there actually is. And, you know, as we interviewed people over the weekend, we were told by Border Patrol agents, and there's a story that's uh, still up on Drudge today, two more swine flu cases confirmed among minor detainees and other two treated for flu-like symptoms. This is Don Salazar's story. We talked to Border Patrol agents there. They were very concerned. Border Patrol agents are testing positive for some of these diseases, not just H1N1, but other diseases that are coming in. They contacted the CDC, and the CDC said, that's not our job. Clearly, they're not worried about it, but they are worried enough about it to essentially tell the government mouthpieces and the mainstream media to start reassuring the public that, don't worry, that we're not going to open the door to a pandemic or maybe to terrorism or to drug cartels. It's just uh, for the children that we're collapsing the borders. Uh, also up today, uh, we've got a story, a further breakdown of what happened uh, with Facebook as people discovered that they were part of a very large experiment to see if... Facebook, with its massive reach, could manipulate the public's mood? Answer, yes, they can. But there's a little bit more to that. Actually, they're linked to Pentagon research on civil unrest. This is a story that's up on InfoWars. Steve Watson points out that the research appears to be at least in part connected to a Pentagon-led project called the Minerva Initiative. So we're going to break that down for you and the connections there at Cornell University. But there's a huge story that's coming out. Of course, a bill has been introduced in California. California is AB 1014, labeled the most draconian gun control legislation in the country. This is a bill that would allow the police to confiscate guns based on accusation alone. Based on accusation alone. Now, this is something that ought to concern everyone, not just people who favor gun control. This is something that even the people who favor gun control, I should say, should be concerned about this because this is another area where they're gutting due process and real trials. It's another area where we're moving into a kind of a star chamber uh, legal system. You know, we have the FISA court. That's not a real court. It's just a single judge. No adversarial relationship there. No jury. You don't have a jury of your peers before your rights are taken away with this. We should be very concerned about things like the FISA court. We should be very concerned about things like this California law, regardless of the issue. Whether it's about guns or whatever, we should be concerned that people's fundamental rights, that their property can be taken away merely by accusation. We're going to be talking more about that. And, of course, at the same time that's happening, we learned that from the Wall Street Journal that uh, Janet Yellen, the new Fed Commission, has this massive security detail surrounding her as if she was a president of the United States. That's the double standard. We'll be right back. Stay with us. I've always believed in nutrition.
nutrition and herbs. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals sourced from powerful organic herbs harvested around the planet and then concentrated for maximum potency. I just received my Male Vitality about three days ago and I must say that is good stuff. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. I jump out of bed ready to fight these criminals every day. I, I look forward to waking up and, and taking my Super Male Vitality and get the day started. It's not just the Super Male Vitality. All the products at InfoWarsLife.com are simply amazing. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality and other powerful products from InfoWars Life. General, what do you think about the FBI saying that there's a terror alert on Monday about a potential Fort Hood situation? The police are shoving people, shoving Alex, shoving the crowd. Here we go, folks. I'm being assaulted. Whether it's the radio show, the news websites, documentary films, or the nightly news, InfoWars is the tip of the spear. Is this another false flag stage attack to take our civil liberties and put more homeland security while sticking their hands down on the pants on the streets? It's up to us to set brush fires in the minds of men and women everywhere. And that's what PrisonPlanet.tv is designed to do. You watch the Assad regime is going to be blamed or accused of using chemical weapons against the so-called rebels. What we see now is a war against reality. It's a war against the truth. It's more vital than ever that supporters of freedom become members of PrisonPlanet.tv and share their membership with up to 11 friends and family. Visit InfoWarsNews.com today. Become a member, share your membership, and help take the InfoWar to the next level. Hi, I'm Dr. Edward Group. It took me 20 years of searching the globe to find the deposit of the highest purity iodine available. The new Survival Shield X2 is mined from 7 to 10,000 feet below the earth in pristine, environmentally clean conditions. The iodine crystals we use are extracted from an ancient 300 million plus year old deposit deep in the earth. It's the strongest nascent iodine on the market today. It delivers 650 micrograms per drop. Experience the new formula. Experience the ancient purity. Shield your family. Survival Shield X2, available now at InfoWarsLife.com. X2 from InfoWarsLife.com or call toll free 888-253-3139. Jones, coming to you live from the front lines of the InfoWar. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show on this Wednesday, July 2nd, 2014. I'm David Knight. Alex Jones is going to be joining us live in the studio later in the show. We're also going to have Harry Dent, the economist, talking to us about what he sees as the challenges ahead. And of course, yesterday we had Peter Van Buren giving us a fictional look at the current situation in America's decline since the 1950s, kind of a retelling of the Grapes of Wrath, uh, calls it the Ghost of Tom Joad, the story of the 99%. He looks at the decline since the 1950s, and of course, as... Uh, we heard Hemingway say in, in his book, uh, The Sun Also Rises, one of the characters uh, is asked how he went bankrupt. He said, well, gradually at first and then suddenly. And that's the way we believe this is going to roll out. Things are certainly accelerating. We have the collapse of the border as part of the Cloward and Piven strategy, strategized back in the 1960s to collapse the United States with a welfare state, an entitlement state, to rapidly increase that to the point that it could no longer be sustained so they could rebuild on the ruins of America the kind of socialist utopia that they want to see. And that is a common recurring theme to see people talking about destroying America so they can rebuild their socialist utopia. We went to see America last night by uh, Dinesh D'Souza. It was an early release. Its official release is today. And that was a common theme. You, you hear that a lot, that America has to be destroyed so that we can rebuild something completely different 
I liked the film. I give it a thumbs up. I'm going to talk a little bit later, though, a little bit more qualified about that. We went, several of us with uh, InfoWars went there last night, and we uploaded a review that's uh, now up on YouTube. Jakari Jackson, Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs, Kit Daniels, and I, and uh, my son Travis, we all went and we talked to what we saw about that. But uh, I wanted to break that down a little bit more because I think there's a little bit more to it. You know, the movie that I really am anxious to see was the one that they previewed, which was about uh, Gary Webb that's coming up in October. It's called Kill the Messenger. Uh, it's played by Jeremy Renner. I hope, I hope that they're going to really lay out what happened with Iran-Contra, with the crack cocaine epidemic that the CIA created in L.A. with Freeway Ricky Ross and the murder of Gary Webb, not the suicide of Gary Webb. You know, he was killed. I hated to see. One of the things I didn't like in the Dinesh D'Souza movie was, although he talked about Aaron Schwartz, he talked about it as if he had been driven to suicide. I don't believe that his psychological outlook was one that was conducive to suicide. We've seen this so many, many times. And uh, I don't think that Aaron Schwartz was, was driven to suicide. Uh, Carmen Ortiz, the prosecutor there, her husband tweeted that they had offered him a deal, not a 35-year in prison, but just a few months, and he turned that down. He was a fighter. He was every bit as much of a fighter as Dinesh D'Souza. And if Dinesh D'Souza suddenly commits suicide, I'm not going to believe that either. Uh, I think you ought to see this movie. I think there's a lot to talk about. It talks about real substantive stuff. I mean, go to see it instead of Transformers. I mean, you'll be talking about Transformers and asking yourself and everybody that saw it, what was that about if you do go waste your money on that? But this is something that's real. This is something that you can talk about. And, of course, you're not going to agree with everything he has to say because it's politics. And nobody agrees totally on politics, just like they don't agree on religion. Now, we have a key story that's up on Infowars.com today. A bill would allow the police to confiscate guns based on accusations alone. This is California's Bill AB1014, labeled the most draconian gun control legislation in the country. They would allow the police to confiscate a person's firearms solely on the basis of an accusation made against the gun owner by a family member or a health professional. So that's one of the dangerous things that we did in the wake of some of these mass shootings. People on the right started saying, hey, we need to give the psychological community power over our lives. That is insane. That's really insane. And people, even people who support gun control should be concerned about this because of the loss of due process. In so many areas of our lives, we are seeing due process thrown under the bus, shredded, destroyed. Whether it's the NDAA or whether it's things like this, we need to have an adversarial trial. We need to have a real trial with a judge, with somebody representing the other, other side. We need to have a jury. We've pretty much lost jury trials. They've used... Uh, threats and, and escalated the charges so much that most people don't go with the jury trial. And part of that is because the judges have been lying to the juries about what their real power and their responsibility is. We need fully informed juries who understand that they're not there just to judge the facts of the law. They're there to judge the law itself. We have many state constitutions that say that explicitly. And it is implied in all of the history of English common law that that is the responsibility of juries. We have to watch each other's backs. That's where the people have their greatest power in veto. And that is in vetoing laws. That's one of the ways that we stopped alcohol prohibition even before they repealed that amendment. So this is something that ought to concern everybody. And here's an example that's given out of the, out of the article. If, for example, person A goes to a judge and files a complaint about person B, person B can then have his or her guns and gun rights taken away without any idea why, or to even have a chance to plead their case. Do you really want to throw due process away to that extent? Only after law enforcement searched person B, their family, friends, place of work, anywhere else that police might have thought person B would hide guns, would that person then have the right to defend themselves? You would be guilty until proven innocent. You know, we've seen that happen with all of the regulatory agencies. They all operate under this civil idea that because they're going to file a quote-unquote civil action,